Bible, what they did when they worshiped God, the Bible said in the Old Testament, whenever they worshiped the God, when they raised their hands, and all the people said amen, and they worshiped God with their face to the ground. So if you go to a church where nobody ever raises their hands, and nobody ever says amen, or bows down, you go to a weird church, you better get out of that. It's a, it's a cult. Them quiet, <laughs> them quiet churches are cults, people. They'll manipulate you and control your mind and make you think you're supposed to be quiet. You ain't quiet at the ball game. Amen. Uh, you ain't quiet when little Johnny hits the ball, hits the T-ball from here to the wall right there. Uh, listen, brother, one of these days, when he come back the next time, there ain't going to be no nails in his hand. There ain't going to be no crown of thorns on his head. Ain't going to be like that next time, buddy. The shoe am going to be on the other foot. I'm telling you what, Brother, it, the, the thing going to turn around. I'll never forget the story. Of this uh, uh, guy's out one day, and he walked by a ball field, a bunch of little leaguers out there playing, and he looked up the score, and it was about 14 to nothing. And poor old boy's out there sweating, why he gloved, and they knocking home runs and everything else. And uh, he's out there like that, and, and the, uh, had his glove like that, and the guy walked back and said, uh, well, you ain't doing too good, are you? And he said, yeah, we're all right. We're all right. And he said, well, 14 to nothing. Yeah, he said, we ain't got the bat yet. And don't you forget that. It looks like we're getting beat in this world, y'all. But we ain't got the bat yet. You wait. You wait. I don't get a big go- bu- bu- bucket of golf balls about that high. Go down Main Street in Morgan and bust out all the liquor bottles and, and, and throw them in Lake James. Amen. All right, with the lint. That's right. All right. We'll come back and rule with the Lord. With the Lord. He'll, with a rod of iron. What the Bible says. I don't know how it's really going to work, but you know what I mean. It's she's going to be on another foot. We ain't got the bat yet. Uh, we're on the winning team, and we are in uh, in dire straits today. That's for sure. Let's take our Bibles this morning. Turn to the Book of Proverbs, chapter fourteen, and this verse will be quoted all over the country this morning. Uh, but I, I do want to use it and just give you a thought or two here uh, for a few minutes. And look at verse number uh, thirty-four. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse number 34. As we think about our freedom, our country, our nation this morning, and what the Bible says about nations, it says a lot. Uh, Proverbs 14, 34, righteousness exalteth a nation. You know how to have a great nation? People get right and do right. You're not, you're not a, hold your finger, I ain't through reading. You're not a blessed nation because you had my minerals in the ground. That's what people think. Oh, America was just blessed because it had a lot of resources. Uh, Canada's got them. Mexico's got them. Africa's got them. None of them were blessed like America. Righteousness exalted the nation. But sin, look at the rest of the verse, is a reproach to any people. I want to preach for a few minutes this morning uh, on, on this subject. Why I love America. I don't worship America, but I do love my country. I don't, uh, my, our God, we don't, we don't worship the Constitution, but we, we worship the God that gave us a Bible that that Constitution came from. And America is a different kind of place. Now, I want to introduce the message this morning by saying, I Feel just like you feel. There's a lot wrong with our country this morning. Uh, there's a lot wrong. God have mercy on us. It's not what it should be, uh, spiritually speaking. We are in trouble in this country, spiritually speaking. Uh, what, what he said in Sunday school earlier was absolutely correct. Because we have people trying to teach our kids nowadays. What, what they'll do is they'll find... Two or three of them found in fathers that wasn't de- they weren't even deists. Some of them were uh, wasn't even Christians, and they'll say, "See there, that that's what they do. They'll pick out the exception to overthrow the rule, and the exception don't overthrow the rule. The exception proves the rule. You find two of them that didn't believe in God, they two hundred of them that did, and our Constitution, the Mayflower Compact, the Bill of Rights, every great legal our 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 justice system." Every bit of it in this country 
was built upon the principles of that book right there. And the people who try to tell you, like people on TV, like them crazy people on The View and and people like that, and they're trying to go and say, well, this country, you know, all these people, these Christians try to say, uh, that, no, those, those people are lacking big time in intellectual uh, and historical lessons. They have no idea what they're talking about. They're just repeating a line that they've been fed. And so uh, there's a lot wrong with our country this morning. The deism uh, wasn't right of our founding fathers. Just there is a God. We don't know who he is. That was not right. The, uh, the old uh, beliefs in, in uh, slavery was wrong in this country. And people who were right with God, even though knew it was wrong and tried to stop it even back then. So America was not built on just a racist slavery country. Slavery was wrong. Amen? Never should have happened. No man has a right to own any other man, uh, no matter what, who they are. And I'll tell you something else. Nobody has a right to hate anybody else just because they don't look like you or talk like you. We don't. We don't have that right. Uh, well, I, we, we love everybody. We love people that hate the Bible. We, we, love, we don't agree with them, but you're supposed to love everybody. And where is nobody no better than nobody else. When we go knocking on doors on Saturday like we did yesterday and like we're going to do this Saturday, Lord willing, yeah, it's hot. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's still lost people when it's hot. As there's still lost people when the creek's fun and the, and the campgrounds are fun. There's still kids going to hell uh, when, when we're all uh, having hot dogs and hamburgers. When we were knocked on doors yesterday, it does not matter who opens that door. We give them the same truth. Amen? We're equal. We're equal. Uh, we're not created equal. There's male, female. Lord, ain't nobody in here equal. We all have our own levels of ugly, ugliness. Uh, but uh, but but the, the truth is uh, we're we're uh, we're uh, no better than nobody else, and that was wrong. Uh, the improvement of our government upon liquor selling back in the 30s and 40s was wrong. That was a major, major, major mistake. Our government uh, voting to give permission for anybody, anytime, anywhere, for any reason, to have an abortion was wrong. That's wrong, brother. That ain't right. Our government stamp of approval on same-sex marriages was wrong. That's wrong. We're in trouble. We're in trouble with God for disobeying Him. Our government uh, legally sanctioning uh, and letting fentanyl come across the border and even encouraging it and all that is wrong. I, I know we got a lot wrong with our country. I, 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 I know that this morning. But still, but still, I thank God that I get to live and, and preach and pray in this country this morning. And I, like I said a few weeks ago, here's, here's what they'll say on all the news broadcasts. You either support the country you live in or go live in the country you support. That good advice? That's good advice. What's wrong with that? Well, I hate this place. I go, we're going to blow up America. But if you don't like it, go move back to you know where, where you come from. If it's so terrible, why why we have to keep trying to keep people out? Yeah, they don't build fences around them other countries trying to keep people out. And they're tired ours down. I'm telling you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, we still got the greatest country in the world as far as our ability to preach and pray and worship the Lord. So why do I love America? I don't love America because of our purple mountain majesties and, and grain, spacious skies and amber waves of grain. I've seen all that. Uh, some of it. Some of them amber waves of grain are, are they don't look too hot. Uh, uh, some of them out, I've been, I've been, I've been out there. I've seen the mountains out west. I've seen the Colorado. I've been Grand Canyon. I've been to Hollywood. I've been to I mean, any place you can name in this country. I've been all over it, and uh, it ain't, it ain't really that the way that song, "Oh Spacious Skies." Man, I was out in Texas. First time I ever went to Texas, uh, in in Amarillo, there's no, there ain't no trees, there ain't no trees. He a preacher told me, he said, if you see a tree, somebody planted it and put it there. And I, when I was laying, I thought, Lord, we messed up and went to the moon. Uh, we we got off track or something. That's, that's what it looked like. And I walked outside the pastor's house. And I thought, shoot, that smells like cow manure. And he said, well, we've got, got about 10,000 cows over there, sir. He said about 20 miles over there. 20 miles. Lord, I'd hate to live close to it. 
I mean, but that, see, the breeze, the, the wind blows, <laughs> just blows it right across there. I ain't an amber wave of grain, brother. I'll, I'll take the uh, Blue Ridge any day of the week. Amen. I'm, I'm a little partial to our part of the country, but I think God blessed us to live in the, in the best part of the best country in the world. Right here in these mountains, the Blue Ridge Mountains, we're right smack on the buckle on the Bible Belt. God's been our water's clean; you can drink it. Uh, our, our air's clean; you can breathe it. Uh, and, and we got freedom. And they say, you know what they say? You know what the experts are trying to change America are saying? They're saying the hardest people in the world to get to change their mind on on issues is this part of the country. Us. Now I've been preaching a long time, and I do admit that the not head is hard to head as bunch of people I ever met in my life do live around here. I mean, I mean these old churches, boy, you couldn't change your mind. Oh, the Bible says, I don't care what the Bible says. You know, you know, we got plenty of them. Uh, but thank God that we live in this place that God's allowed us to live in. It's not heaven. Uh it not at all. There's a lot wrong, but I want to tell you why I love uh my country. First of all, this morning, I I just want to say I love it because we have the right to assemble. We have the right to assemble. You know what gives us this right? The Constitution and the grace of God. That's it. That's what it is. Their enemies of our Constitution today are completely ignorant. Uh, they, They are getting to be against it because of it. They have the right to be against it because of it. And brother, we ought to thank God for that. Some of these people that ain't that, that hates America so bad, I'm telling you, people, I'm telling you, yeah, you, you, you might you might want to rethink that. You you really, really might. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our constitution was given uh and, and written down that we might have the freedom to worship God uh, according to the dictates of our own heart, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Did you know this morning that over in Nigeria there's a 14-year-old girl, a 14-year-old girl named Leah Shariba. She lives in Nigeria. She is a captive of of the uh, of the uh, of the of the, the government in prison, and she was 14 years old when they put her in prison and arrested her for witnessing. 14 years old. As far as I know, she'd still be in jail right now. That's been near 10 years. She was put in jail for for witnessing as a 14 year old girl. Do you 14-year-old girls witness? Uh, you ain't going to go to jail for it here. Uh, you don't even get out of track, man. You, you see what I'm talking about? We got privileges in this country that they do not have in other countries. And then there's uh, um, Rapichi uh, in Pakistan who's in prison also for uh, witnessing. There's in Iran. They are forced. They are raped. They have forced conversions. That little Salim. Only 25 years old, Salim Maish was beat to death because he took advantage or used a, a Muslim a Muslim man's property. He was supposed to be a Christian, and they beat that young man to death. They have their heads cut off and tortured in Sudan. Did you know right now you can't do what we're doing right here in China? We can't do this in China. You can't go to China and rent you a building and hang up a sign and say, Shining Light Baptist Church, and just welcome everybody and do what I'm doing. It's against the law. That is a communistic socialist state. And by the way, we got tons of politicians that want it that same way here. So they can shut them out. You say, well, I heard on TV they said they did have religion in China. They have, listen to me, they have state-controlled churches. There's a difference in state-controlled churches. Me and us right here, we don't qualify as a state-controlled church. They can't tell us what to say. They can't tell us what to preach. They can't tell us what to believe. Listen, you better thank God you don't live in China. I think all them basketball players that think so great, let them go over there and play ball. All they want to. I'm telling you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, you know what John Adams said? John Adams, one of our great fathers of faith in this country, he said, quote, we have no government. We have no government armed with power, capable of contending with human passions, unbridled by religion and morality. Some of y'all can't understand that. People's a lot smarter back then than they are now. 
True. They read and studied back then. All you do is stare now. Our Constitution was made for a moral and religious people. It is totally inadequate for the government of any other. Now, let me, you want me to take, break it down for you? He said the Constitution won't work where you have human passions running wild and no respect for God and what's right. In other words, when people are just like a bunch of animals that have no restraint. I was in the store. Where was I that day? In the store. And he was just joking around. I heard he's up north. And, and they talking about somebody stealing something. And they said, I think it's at the dollar store. No? It wasn't the store that I was in the other day. Walmart or somewhere. Anyway, they said, uh, well, what if they do is somebody steal something? And they said, well, well, uh, if it's less than $1,000, they just let it go. So my West Virginia mind started working. I said, so I can come in here and steal something every day for $999? And come back next day and get another TV. Come back next day and get a computer. There's a long son of $1,000. Don't tell me that. No, I didn't say that. I did not say that. I, I, I stole nothing. Uh, but listen, you know what? That, that, that Laws don't work when people have unbridled passions. I mean, all you're going to have is about, you're going to have, you're going to have chaos. You're going to have uh, lawlessness. You're going to have a mess. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what our Constitution was, was given to us. Amen? We have the right to assemble. And let me say this again this morning. I say it all the time. The church ain't perfect. We got our flaws. We, I got mine. You got yours. But I, I, I don't go. I meet people all the time. I don't go to church. I don't go to church. I'm preachers just asking for money. I don't go to church. I know a hypocrite. I don't go to church. Them people over there ain't no better than I. Listen, people, I don't go to church because I have to. I go to church because I want to. I love being here. Because I'm the preacher. I wasn't preaching them in the go. And I was loving it. I love to hear about them saying, oh, one day everybody's going to bow before them. I want to go to church. I want something wrong with somebody don't want to go to church. You say, well, I've been hurt. Well, join the crowd, cry baby. we all been hurt. Guess what? If you don't go to church, you get hurt. Get over it. Come to the house of God. Brethren, we've met to worship. I thank God we can assemble in this country this morning. Try another country. See how you like it. Try a country where girls 11 years old are already forced and abducted to made, marry much older Muslim men. And the girls have no choice. Won't they do a special on that on CNN? Huh? Wonder why that ain't on, discussed on The View. Or talk about in India, the brutal persecution of Pastor Brian Naren. Many of you remember that. Where they arrested him and took him and put him in jail, and a Christian group got together and they went and demanded somehow or another they got him released, and he finally got back home to his wife in Tennessee. Boy, I don't know about you, but if I'd have been him, and I'm sure he did, got out of India prison and flying in that jet across the ocean, when I looked down there and I seen Tennessee, you don't think you'd shout? Years ago, when I was about 20, I don't know, uh, 25, 26 years old, me and these boys, we took a mission trip to Haiti. And they told me all about it. And I know and Haiti is a, t a pitiful place. I feel sorry for the people in Haiti. We supported missionaries. We sent, we sent money there. We, and it's, it's a dark, dark place. The main religion of Haiti is voodoo and Catholicism merged together. And the reason Catholicism, Catholicism can merge with wherever country it's in uh, to try to keep people locked in. And so it's voodoo. And uh, I've seen people sitting on uh, up against a telephone pole and have, have a, 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 like a blanket over them. Something like that. And I said, what's wrong with them? And they said, they're in a, they're in a trance. And they beat drums till they get demon possessed. It ain't like here. And they took us out. We went way out this little trail. Me and two, uh, th three other guys where they had never even seen a white person. And we went way out there and way out there and way out there. And I said, Lord, I want to be a witness because I got to preach. I get to preach. And uh, they turned out all these customs and stuff. And there's a great big tree right there. 
And they said, that tree right there is cursed by the witch doctor. They said, anybody who touches that tree right there will die. And I sat there the whole time. I'm going to go over and touch that tree so bad I couldn't stand it. I'm going to go over there and be a tree hugger and see what happens. And then I thought, I don't know about that, man. <laughs> the devil might kill me. And, but that, that's what they believe. And that stuff gets real. Them, witch, them people get demon possessed through rhythm. We'll hear more about that at camp. You know to get de- how to get demon possessed? It's rhythm, buddy. Boom, boom, boom. Go to places where they don't even have musical instruments. That's how they get demons beating on us. Like that, the jungle. And we's out there. And they have no no kind of uh, structure, law, like like red lights and stuff. The car just goes down the street like this. They people uh, uh, sand all around here, beep, beep, move over and they come, beep, open meat market where there's meat out there. And it's blue. It's about 105 degrees. People just buy it. Oh, man, that killed me if I ate that. And I thought, Lord have mercy. People sit there, nothing. You know, man had blue. I asked him about a Bluetooth. I said, I've seen that guy. He had one tooth, it's blue. And and uh, they, they, they sat there like that. They sat there all day. So we was driving somewhere in a, I don't know what it was, a taxi, a taxi. It was about like a, it was about like a real older model Nissan Sentra, something like that, real old. And we was driving. And this guy driving this thing was going crazy. He was swerving around. I thought, man, we're going, he's crazy. We're going to get, we're going to have a wreck. And Paige Gibbs, got Marion, sitting right beside me. I said, Paige, we're going, he's going to wreck us. And he was going rrr, rrr, flying through there. When they go through intersections, ain't no stop sign, ain't no stop. I said, I tell you, this guy's going to get us killed, man. He's crazy, and we couldn't understand it. They was talking to each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we was going, I don't even know where we're going, dude. What are we doing here? And here I am, little redneck Danny from Nebo, in a foreign country, in the back city. I didn't, and you know what? Shores the world. We come across the intersection, and I see the car coming that way. I said, oh, boy. You know that feeling you get? You know that feeling you get to get about a half a second before you have a wreck? How many of y'all know what that feels like right here? You see it. Bam. That's it. You, you have time to see it. That's, I said, here we go. And I, I got down like that and held Bam! We plowed into that car. I mean, it spun us around and everything. I didn't get hurt because I, I was like that. We jumped out. The guy that's in the front, he was laying on the ground. He could not move. I felt so sorry for him. It hurt his back real bad. And immediately, there was there was thousand people gathered around there. There's like, I thought, what, what will we do now, y'all? Well, you can't take hey, John nine one one. You're not going to believe this, but in a few minutes, the hospital came, and they had one of them, it looked like one of them trolley cars over in Gutlinburg over there. That's what it looked like. And, and they, they had this, this car where it was open, and that was the ambulance. Right? That was the ambulance. They said, get a hospital. How you go to hospital? I said, okay. We all hopped on that thing. We rode, 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 rode. And I'm kidding you not. I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm not trying to talk bad about them. Bless their hearts. That's all they got. They, we took, they took us to the emergency room. And it honestly, no veterinarian in, it would, would operate in a place like that. Block walls. Just those dirt, cement floor. Very primitive. Just those silver metal dish there, and they'd take a rag and wipe off them boys bleeding. And I, they took us in there, and I sat there. I sat there. I was fine. I looked around like that, and I thought, I don't even know where I'm at. I don't, I don't even get back to where I, motel or nothing. And we were sitting there, and they put that man, and I felt so sorry for that guy. It hurt his back real bad. His name was Paul. He was a Haitian missionary. He was a Haitian who was a, was a pastor. And they they done something with him. They finally took us back. And it finally got to the day before we was going to leave. And they sent word over there. They said, uh, uh, this accident, they're going to be investigating it. And you, you Americans were in the car. And so uh, you're going to be detained. Uh-uh, I ain't going to be detained. They said, uh, we're going to keep y'all. See, the way they think over there, anybody from America has lots of money. 
And we do compared to them. I mean, you all go on the street. Everybody say, oh, my friend, my friend, I have something for you. My friend, I have something. And you know, they have something for you. All right. And, uh, they, and uh, they, they want your money. And I said, Lordy mercy, Paige ain't going to let us out of here. And they were seriously talking about detaining us for it was in that accident. And I said, oh, God. Lord, I remember my heels in front of my house. Lord, I want to see my driveway. Lord, you don't know how bad you miss this place until you think you might not see it again. I want to see Greasy Corner. I want to see Stacy Hill, Lord. Lord, I want I want to get a mosquito bite out in the yard. I want to see a lightning bug. Anything. God, give me out. And we got on that plane. And I mean, they wouldn't want us to leave. And we got on that plane. And I'm telling you, when that thing took off, I thought, Woo! We're out of there. And we landed, I think, in Charlotte. And brother, I thought, my feet are back on American soil. I heard about all them stories of our boys in the army and how they seen their boys, their people blow the bits right in front of them and how they, how them boys uh, uh, seen their family. Hey, can you imagine? They said some of them guys, when they got back, they got down and kissed the ground for being back in this country. Now, I'm going to tell you people something here this morning. All you nice, good, fine Christian people don't ever do nothing wrong. I'm going to tell you something. You better thank God for the place He's given you to live. You better thank God for your house. You better thank God. I know our country's crazy. They talking about that way. They said the other, somebody said it earlier. They said, uh, all right, "Who you got in the White House? We ain't got nobody in the White House." Uh, they left. Some gone somewhere. Listen, y'all, our country's in trouble. But thank God we do have a little bit of time and a little bit of liberty. Let's do something for God while we got a chance here in this day. Amen. Devil try to stop you. All you young people here this morning. It's sinning. You fooling around with sin. You used to be right with God. You used to live right and you used to serve the Lord, but now you've let some bunch of nuts entice you into partying, drinking, smoking dope, weed, drinking beer, anything. You better listen to me this morning. This Bible said, To whom much is given, much will be required. One day you, friend, are going to stand in front of God and he's going to say, I let you live in the best place in the world. Look how you acted down. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I was down in, I was down in uh, actually in Florida where they live, in Fort Myers. The last time uh, I took Kelly down there for our anniversary, it's been several years now, probably in five, four, four years, I guess, somewhere yeah, since we've been down there. Man, you, you talk about hot. You go down there this time of year. It's hot, ain't it, preacher? I mean, when you go out at night, it's like an oven hits you in the face. Twelve, one o'clock in the morning. And so we was out one day, and you do what you're supposed to on vacation. You you behave yourself and let let her shop. <laughs> and, and I say, look, you can look at anything you want to. I'm gonna catch up on my text, my phone calls, and so I get. And there's a store she wanted to go to called. Um, it's something for kids. Some little kids are where they sell stuff cheap. Huh? Once upon a child. That's it. She said, oh, they got a once upon a child. Can I go in there? That was, Frankie was real little. And I said, yeah. I said, uh, is there a few? If I, go, if I go down there and shoot some basketball? And she said, yeah, go ahead. I'll, I'll be gone. So I said, I'll be back in about an hour and I'll have my ball. I'll take my ball when I'm going on a trip like that. And there's a park right down there. It's near that hospital. There's a big old park out there. So I drove the car. All the gyms was closed because of coronavirus. You couldn't get in none of the gyms. So I took my ball and I went to that park. Man, you talk about hot. Lord have mercy. It ain't just 100 degrees coming down on you. It's another 100 coming up at you on asphalt. And they, there was not one person. What fool go out there and play ball? And I took my ball and I, was, I run. And, and I, I was out there shooting. I saw a bunch of homeless people on them picnic tables. And I had to walk right through them or around them once. And something said, well, that's a pretty rough bunch there. And then people I was pulling out a knife that robbed you. And I thought, well, I guarantee I could outrun any one of them. 
They're like this. It's awful. It's awful. There was girls saying, just, you see how they do? Like a, Look at Kensington up there in Philadelphia. That don't break your heart, man. Nothing else will. They're standing there like this. Until they can get another high. Laying on picnic tables. And a man started walking toward me. And I thought, you might ought to just sort of get around this way, Brother Danny. And I thought, well, what if that's my daddy? What if that's my daddy? I just said, Lord, help me. I took my ball and said, how you doing that, buddy? What's your name? I think his name was Tom. I said, Tom, what's wrong? I hate this place. I'm out here. Oh, it's the smell. You can understand. There's people like this table right here. There'd be two or three people just waiting on it like that right there. And I said, Tom, what in the world are you doing out here? I said, where are you from? He said, Las Vegas. And I said, this is worse than Las Vegas? He said, yeah, too hot here. And I said, well, what would you wind up out here? Some girl he's chased or something out there and wound up, wound up homeless down there uh, 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 just begging on the street, life on drugs. And I said, Tom, you know the Lord Jesus loves you. And you know there's hope for you. And I finally, I was over there talking to all them people. And they just look at you like, like they wasn't nobody home, man. I mean, they had eyes, but they wasn't. You know, you know what I'm talking about? They're messed up, y'all. And, and, and the, the girls, they're just doing, they're out there like this, just on the street. It's like something's got a hold of them, and, and something does. That's how the devil get in you, buddy, drugs. And, and alcohol, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Devil's three biggest tools. He'll use either one of them to get in your life. And I, I stood there and witnessed them people. And my goodness, was it ever hot. It was hot, hot, hot. And so I shot basketball for a little bit. And I prayed and I left. And I thought, you know what? Many countries in the world, you can't even do that. You can't even walk up to somebody and say, Jesus loved you and died for you. It's a crime. So I'm going to challenge everybody here this morning. I'm going to challenge everybody here this morning. The best way I can describe y'all is spoiled brats. That's what we are all in America. We really are. We're spoiled rotten. Ain't nobody in here looks like you're starving. Amen. <laughs> I ain't fussing at you. I mean, God's been good to us. God's been good to us. I think it might be time for us to get right with Him and be what we're supposed to do. That's why I love America. Don't take it for granted. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Heads bowed and eyes are closed this morning. Come and get a song, girl. I believe there's somebody here this morning. Maybe, maybe, maybe you've never been to church here. This is the first time you've ever been to church in your life. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Is God dealing with you? You can get saved. You can get saved this morning. You really can. You don't have to be in a church building and get saved. They really, there ain't no such thing as a church building in the, in the New Testament. We just build one because we have to. You can't put this many people in your living room. You don't have to. You don't have to be in a church building and get saved. But you do have to get saved and go to heaven. And the Lord loves you and He wants to save you. If you're here this morning, God's dealing with you. Are you here this morning... Maybe you used to go to church, serve the Lord, do right, and the devil knocked you sideways. You got a sun's coming already. Just get out your seat and come right now. Just get down here. And say, all right, Lord, I'm gonna start all over again. I'm gonna start all over. I'm making a fresh start today. No more excuses. No more blaming this, blaming that. I'm starting all over today. Amen. Others are coming. Others are coming. I'm gonna pray, and they're gonna sing. Get out of your seat. Meet me down here at this altar. And let's appreciate what God's done for us in this country. God, help us this morning, Lord. God, help that one that needs to come get saved to come. Help that one that needs to come to get their heart right to come. Lord, help us gather around this altar and pray. And give ourselves to you and you and the fresh. God, do what ought to be done in our life. Well, thank you for it. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sing it, girl. If you need to come, you come this morning. Amen. You come on right now. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on, sir. Come on, young man. Come on, young lady. I just get down on my knees and say, all right, Lord, here goes. Here goes. I'm giving my life to you. Come on. Come on. Amen.
are so wrong in my heart. I'm rejoicing. Woo! Everybody sing with it. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. You think about our blessings this morning. Everybody, let's sing it together. There's a roof up above me. I've got a good place to sleep. I've got a good place to sleep. i got food on my table. There's food on oh, my table. i got shoes on my feet. And shoes Woo! on my feet. You gave me your love, you Lord. You gave me your love, Lord. And, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for Blessing. your blessings Go ahead. on me. Everybody. Although I'm not wealthy and these clothes they're yeah. not new. Come on now. Don't have I much don't money. have much money. Lord, I got you. That's but Lord, I have you. That's all that matters. To me, that's all that matters. Though the world may not see, thank you, Lord, for your blessings Amen. on me. Amen, y'all. Amen. Come on, let's pray. Amen. There's a roof up above me. I've got a good place to sleep. Oh, if you had a place to sleep last night, you there's food, food on, on my you to be table. On the couch, Love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. Amen. Everybody. There's a roof up above me. You got air conditioning. You got a car. The people in down there don't have nothing like that. There's food on your table, Lord God. Shoes on your feet. And shoes on my feet. Amen. You gave me your love, Lord. Amen. And a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. I'm still praying this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Amen. What a blessing, Lord. Hey, come up here while she's praying, Juan. This boy just got saved at the youth rally. That's his wife right there and that's little chunk right there. Look at him. He's wondering what daddy doing up here. That, that little chunk. He just looks like a little chunk to me. That's why I got it. Uh, hold him up there, sister. There he is. There, He's pretty heavy, ain't he? He's like a bowling ball. But, yeah, yeah. He's been out working, so anybody need work done, I, I, I'm going to put a plug for him. Any kind of yard work, pressure washing, painting, God's good at it. So y'all hook up with him after church. And DJ, want me to plug him too? He's got a detailing business. I really, I, he, he's, he'll, he'll be here if you need to talk to him. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. He'll, he'll do, he's getting better. DJ's detailing. Anybody else need me to visit? We got people who's got businesses. Ronnie right there. Hey, Ronnie, that, that, that's the best body man right there. Have you got one of them things that takes dents out? I need to talk to you. My wife backed in them up side to side. Uh, but uh, Ronnie's got to uh, keep. There's people in here that need work. So if you need work, Help, help some of these people. Anybody else want me to plug you while I'm up here? Amen. Jeff Worley, come clean out your sewer system. Free of charge. No, he won't. I'm just kidding. I'm just messing with him. He works at Broughton. I'll tell you something right there. That's right. All right. Uh, all right. Now, we want to remind you that t- tonight... Uh, Ladies, if you got some church clothes, these girls could wear to camp. Uh, honestly, some of them have nothing to wear to camp. I mean, they got they ain't much of nothing. They ain't got ch- church clothes. So bring them tonight, and we'll let the la- they divide it up with them, uh, especially those jean skirts because it matches anything. 
and uh, uh, big t-shirts or anything like that for the boys. You bring them tonight and uh, let me know also about the sponsor kid. The bus leaves one week from tomorrow morning. Tonight we're going to have a special pre-camp preparation pep rally tonight. And so I'll be preaching and I'm going to show some stuff about camp tonight. So don't miss that at 6 o'clock this evening. All right, I think that's about everything. Uh, let's let's go get you some rest. Be back this evening early. The Lord bless you for it. Let's bow our head and we'll be dismissed for a prayer. Everybody, but Jeff, go ahead and dismiss. We'll just...